How's it going everybody? Evo here. And today we're finally getting around to making the five things I love about my 2004 Mercedes-Benz E55 AMG. Kind of a mouthful, but at least it's not like the new ones where it's Mercedes AMG GLE 63S Coupe, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but yeah, so number, we're gonna start this video with obviously one through five. Um, these are in no particular order. Um, these are just the five things I love about it. So it's not like number one's the best, number five is the worst. It doesn't matter, it's just in terms of to keep it or organized, I put them in order. So yeah, let's go ahead and start with number one. All right, going ahead and getting started with number one on this list is the looks of the car. So anybody that doesn't know, the E55 is part of the W211 chassis of Mercedes-Benz, which is the E-Class chassis, which ran from model year 2003 all the way to 2009. 2010, it is the W212, the newer E-Class, and then before 2003, it's the W210, which is the previous generation. So. 2003, 2009, and it had a mid-cycle refresh in 2007, which we'll get to in a second. But mine is a 2004, which means that uh, it is pre-facelifted. So obviously my particular car has the upgraded, you know, facelifted E63 front bumper and E63 rear taillights, which I'll throw in a picture of what the car looked like originally. And also I'm gonna show you guys what mine looks like with the upgraded bumpers and the taillights, which is a very popular upgrade to these cars. But I wanna, what I wanted to talk about is that when I say the looks of the car, I wanna stress just how discreet and, you know, under the radar this car looks originally. So you guys know all these new, you know, the new E63, the new generation, the S-Class, all them, you could tell it's an AMG. It looks aggressive. It's got, you know, all these vents and all this stuff. When this came out originally, you wouldn't be blamed for thinking this was a regular regular E-Class if it didn't have any badges on it because it was discreet and you know under the radar, which for some people that means a lot because think about it. And you know, I mentioned this when I first got the car, when I mentioned that I had to repaint it, what's gonna be more discreet? A car that looks like every other car in the Mercedes lineup, like from 2004, this looks like a base model E-Class. You, If I take the badges off, Unless you know what you're looking at, any regular person wouldn't be able to tell this is an AMG. Or the new cars, which look like they're, you know, all this aggressive, the aero and the vents and everything, which they look amazing, don't get me wrong. But the way this car looks in design, you could never tell this car is packing a supercharged V8 making 470 horsepower just by looking at it. Obviously, mine has been modified. I've got a carbon fiber, you know, front lip and rear, you know, rear diffuser and whatnot. But regardless, when this car came out originally, also in 2003, this was the fastest production sedan. And I'll get to that in the next part because the next part actually involves, you know, that part. <laughs> but regardless, the way this car looks, this is by far my favorite E-Class Mercedes has ever made. And yeah, you can say the 210 or the 124, or the bulletproof ones, and they are, they're fantastic cars. But they don't look as good as this car in my opinion. This thing, I think Mercedes hit it right, hit the nail on the head when they designed this car. It's discreet, it's subdued, it looks amazing. And when you get into it, when you rail it, it goes like a freight train. So that's gonna segment us into the second thing on this list, which number two on this list is the engine. Now for anybody that, you know, and I'm not here to say, oh, you don't know anything about this car, you know, no. This car, when it came out in 2003, it used the regular five liter Mercedes engine, which is the M113, which is the five liter that makes about 302 horsepower from the factory. And the masterminds at AMG got their hands on the engine, bored it out to 5.4, even though it says E55, it's a 5.4, 5.4 liters and put on a big blower on it, blower, supercharger, on the motor and obviously tuned it. I think they changed the pistons around and whatnot. And they cranked it from 302 to 469 horsepower. When this came out in 2003, this was the fastest production sedan in the world. This car, there was n there was no four-door sedan out there that was faster than this car back then. Obviously, yeah, the other things came out and became faster than this, than this car, but what I'm saying is for that one or two years, this was the fast fastest four-door sedan in the world. And that's a big thing. Not everybody can say they had the fastest thing, you know, fastest whatever, at one point. 
yeah, just the Bugatti was the fastest supercar in the world up until, I don't know, whatever, I guess the other, the faster Bugatti or the Koenigseggs came out and beat the original one. But regardless, the engine in this car is bulletproof. And I don't want to jinx myself. <laughs> As you guys know, you know, I've done work on this car already because it has broken on me and whatnot, but not really the car to blame. It does have 180,000 miles and it's tuned and has no cats and probably wasn't taken care of that well by the previous owner. But regardless, 180,000 miles, it still makes all the power that it has. And mine is tuned, so mine's making around 530, 540 to the crank, not wheel horsepower, to the crank because of the mods I've done or the mods that are done to it. But yeah, even that, you can look up these up online and when this car was released, you know, BMW, they had, they were releasing the uh, E60 M5, which had the five liter V10, which, you know, is in, it's in my opinion, an engineering marvel of its own. And you guys know I'm not the biggest fan of BMWs, but I will res give respect to that car because stuffing a V10 in it was crazy. But when this came out and a lot of people laughed at it because they're like, oh, it's just a basic V8, single cam V8 or a single overhead cam V8 with a supercharger. This is bare bones and terrible. There are more of these on the road probably now than those E60 M5s because <laughs> all those engineering marvels I mentioned on the E60 M5, the Vanos, uh, the rods, the engine, you know, in general, they don't last very long because of the way they're designed, which again, not trying to throw any hate towards BMW people. I love the V10 motors. They're great. They sound great when they work. But yeah, this car has 180,000 miles. There is an E55 online, and you guys can look it up, that has a 455,000 miles, and it's running as good as it did the day it came out. They even dyno day, and it's still making the same power. Why? Because German engineering and the people at AMG designed this car to last. Now, along with the engine that I'm mentioning, I want to also talk about the transmission. It's not the fastest shifting, it's not a dual clutch, it's not that manual automated BS stuff that other people had. This is a basic uh, ZF5 speed. So it's called the 722.6. It's not fast shifting at all, but it's reliable. And the only thing wrong with these transmissions is, I already posted a video of it, is the conductor plate. You replace the conductor plate in this little, um, the harness O-ring that sits on the side of the transmission that leaks, and that's it. You just service it every 50,000 miles or 100,000 miles, whatever it is. And you're, you're good to go. And I really apologize if you guys are getting a lot of you know wind noise, but yeah, that, that's it. I love this motor. I love the, the way this car drives. And it's it's just, it's great. You know what I mean? I mean, it's reliable. It's great. Um, obviously, the more you tune it, the more you mod it, it's going to become less reliable, but that's with everything. Okay, and to finish off number two right now, what we're going to discuss with is that sure you can go out and buy the newer 2007 and 2009 facelift the 211 chassis the e63s and while that motor is fantastic that was the first motor amg built by themselves that wasn't that wasn't you know a motor they used for mercedes they hand built that motor from the ground up but the problem is those motors have a lot of issues and you know they came from these bare bone roots 5.4 supercharged v8 to the 6.2 which again it's not a 63 it's not a 6.3 it's a 6.2 um those motors have head bolt issues they have cam phaser issues and some other stuff that you know i'm forgetting and you guys can correct me in the comments but those are the two biggest things with the cam phaser issues and the head bolt issues which are pretty big considering you got to pull the motor out to do the head gaskets so yeah the 5.4 e55s or just in general the m113k is in my opinion the best motor you know, one of the best, one of the best motors Mercedes ever built with AMG. So yeah, let's go ahead and move on to number three. We have the build quality of this vehicle. Now, before you start typing in the comments, oh, but Evo, this is all plastic and this and this and this. Shut up. Okay. Shut up. Because, oh, they did not mean to turn that on. This compared to the pre-facelift W212 is miles ahead of the build quality. These are actual door panels. When you open this and you close it, it feels like an actual solid door. The 212s, while they're great cars and they have the great, you know, 63 motors. Ooh, yeah, they're not, you know, the best build quality. So, yeah. 
So as I was saying, sorry about that little interruption, the build quality between this and the newer 212 E-Class is night and day. This car is so much better in my opinion. And yeah, sure, it's not as sound as the 210, the one that came before this, because those are tanks, I mean, you know, those literally are like, that was the prime of Mercedes build, was the late 80s or just in general, pre-2000 was when the Mercedes was building the highest quality of cars that they ever have. I mean, you know, the Mercedes 142 S class was so overbuilt that they lost money on most of them. So yeah, but um, I'm just gonna, you know, I, that's what I wanna mention is that these cars, a lot of people also consider this to be the last E class that was, you know, well built aside from, you know, the new ones are fantastic cars. Like I've said, don't, even the 212 is a fantastic car. I love them, but you notice that Mercedes cheaped out on sections of those cars. Whereas in this car, yeah, sure. It has, you know, plastic here and, you know, here and whatnot or here, but it looks quality and it is because it's, it may be plastic, but it hasn't broken in the 180,000 miles or the 17 years that somebody's driven this car. It was built well. It's a quality, you know, part and it's the, the cars are fantastic. For any of you that I've ever driven, it doesn't even have to be an AMG. A 211 chassis E320, E320 CDI, E350, E320 Blue Tech, or E500 or 550 or AMG, you guys know what I'm talking about. You guys know the build quality of these cars is fantastic. Mercedes definitely knew what they were doing when they built them. And it just, you know, kind of sucks that they kind of dipped in quality. Obviously, the, the new ones are fantastic. They've gone way back up, but it kind of sucks that for that period of from 2010, I guess 11 or 2012, they kind of, the build quality on the E-Class was kind of shitty, but you know, they've obviously learned from their mistake. They first lifted a 212 and it became a great car. So yeah, we're not talking about the 212. Now we're talking about the 211. So let's go ahead and move on to number four on this list. So number four on this list that I want to mention is the aftermarket scene for the E55 AMG. So as you guys know, the E55, has, you know, depending on what year they were in from 2003 to 2006. So mine's an 04. There's, that, that's about 17 years for somebody to come with that out with an aftermarket. And you may be saying, that's a long time. Well, obviously there's an aftermarket. Well, not on every car because the previous car I used to have was a 2003 Porsche Boxster S. And the aftermarket, while there was some, it was one, very expensive. And two, it's, it was very hit and miss with that car because not a lot of people modified them, which give or take. But the E55 has a great following. Whether you're getting a tune from Eurocharged, VRP, Race IQ, which I have the tune on this car from Race IQ and I'm very happy with it. There's a massive aftermarket scene and the parts aren't gonna destroy your bank account. I mean, a, a decent blower pulley and tune setup is gonna run you about $600. That's for quality parts. Sure, you can get some Chinese parts off eBay, but I wouldn't recommend that unless you want a, the motor to go kaboom. So yeah. Um, intake system is exhausts modifying the internals of the engine doing anything to these cars is fantastic you know it's not expensive it's not it's not gonna blow your bank it's not you know gonna cost you an arm and a leg like some of the other cars out there like the m5s just to maintain the e60 m5 is gonna probably destroy your life and destroy your bank account and probably if you're married get you divorced and you're gonna live in a trailer home but no, i'm just i'm kidding but yeah the, you know compared to that car this car is uh, like a Toyota compared to that to the E60 M5 and the way to you know maintain it and the aftermarket scene the aftermarket scene for this car like I've said is insane you can find exhausts from a lot of companies Borla Magnaflow I think Mesa no not Mesa I think a Krapovich might make exhaust for this car too a lot of companies make exhaust for these cars and you can find good parts I mean long tube headers short or just you know mid-length headers d cats or performance cats anything you need you can find it for this car they even sell a tune for the transmission you know what i mean or you can even modify them you can put a six-speed manual in this car and now that's very rare there's only a couple of them out there but it's doable people have done it and it oh i think it costs like seven or eight thousand which it's a lot of money but compared to some other cars that you know they, they don't even you can't even do that so yeah, the aftermarket scene for these cars is amazing. If you buy one of these and you're gonna wanna modify it, you won't be disappointed with you know the options that you have on which way you wanna go. Me personally, this is my daily driver, so obviously I'm not gonna you know go crazy 700 horsepower. You know, I'm making a decent 
530, 540 to the crank, and I'm pretty happy with the way the car performs. It's very quick, you know, my standards, very quick. It the throttle response is great, the car moves great. Go ahead and uh I want to move on to number five. So number five on my list is the probably the one that you know it's gonna you guys are gonna be like, oh, what are you kind of talking about? Well, I want to talk about the support for the E55 AMGs. These cars have a cult following all over the world. And this is kind of, you know, segues to the previous thing where I mentioned the aftermarket scene, but the, you know, you there are forms on Facebook, forms on Ben's World, forms on everywhere. You can look anywhere, you can find help. If, you, if you're getting into these, you, don't, you shouldn't be intimidated being like, oh, I don't know anything about Mercedes. That's okay. There are videos online of how to work on these cars. There are, there are, forms upon forms as i mentioned of people discussing how to fix things on these cars and the major problems that arise and probably cheaper ways to fix them than taking them to the dealer and these cars are not hard to work on i mean you shouldn't be intimidated by having to change your spark plugs on a car you know the, these are pretty basic anything on this car oil change is pretty easy to do even servicing the transmission isn't hard you know you can all do this with, with a couple of jack stands in your driveway and that's kind of what i want to talk about is that the, the you know the status and the following that these cars have and I guess the 211 E63s as well but more the 55s people love these cars I mean people you know they're supportive of each other as well and the reason I'm saying that is because if you guys watched my five things I hate about my Porsche Boxster if you own a Boxster from the early 2000s or just a Boxster or Cayman in general there's a lot of people out there that drive 911s that look down on you well oh, you didn't buy a real Porsche you bought a Boxster so what you don't get that with these cars with these cars, you have an E55 AMG or you have an E500. Nobody's going to come up to you and be like, oh, you drive a basic E500. I have an AMG. No, that doesn't happen. Everybody supports, you know, the 211 chassis because it's a great chassis and it's a fantastic community to be a part of. So if you really are thinking about jumping into one of these and I'm kind of, you know, I'm, I'm going to say a couple things, but I'm going to leave the rest of this for the video review that I'm actually going to do on this car, which will be coming soon. If you're thinking about one of these, go ahead and do it. I mean, obviously drive it first, but go ahead and do it. These are great cars. The community is great. The aftermarket is great. The reliability is there. They're great cars. I mean, genuinely. And, you know, if you ever got stuck on something, all you do is just type on the form, hey, everybody, you know, I have so-and-so. I'm working on this. I don't know what to do. And within minutes, you are going to get a response from people that know what they're doing. You know, they're going to be like, hey, check this out, do this. Or you have a problem that you can't figure out, go ahead and ask it on the forums. Somebody is bound to having had the same problem there, right there to help you. Sure, you're going to have a few bad apples where they're going to be like, oh, you know, figure it out or something. But most of the time, everybody's fantastic. You know, all the people out there will help you. They will, they won't, they won't bring you down. They will help you achieve, you know, or fix your car or whatever. So I know this is a little bit of a longer video, but um, I want to thank you guys all so much for watching this video. Um, well, next week, we're going to be talking about the five things I hate about this car, which it's kind of hard because I love everything about it. But yeah, so five things I, I love. This is this video, five things I hate. is going to be coming next week. So I want you guys all to have a great day. Go ahead and click the subscribe button. Go ahead and like this video. Let me know in the comments if you guys have a 211, whether it's an AMG or basic E320. I don't care. Like I said, I love the whole 211 chassis. So if you have one, let me know in the comments. What do you guys love about your cars? Or what do you hate about them? You know, you go ahead and let me know. Thank you guys. You guys all have a great day. And I'll see you guys in the next video.